<laughs> Welcome back, web warriors, to another episode of the Mediocre Spider Mat. Swip, swip, jump, tumble, snap your remark. I'm back, baby, yeah! Today, since we're all impatiently waiting for Sony Presents Sony's Spider Man 2, I thought it would be a gas to take a look at various radioactive fan games that have popped up on the World Wide Web over the last few years. Now, while you'd think a character as well loved and as recognized as the old wall crawler would have dozens upon dozens of unlicensed hacks and fan creations, there surprisingly isn't. If anything, that fervor seems to be centered around, uh, other forms of media. Ugh. Still though, I was able to lasso together a few games that I think are more than worthy for us to adventure through. So slap on your web shooters and let's get swinging! First up, we have a 2017 open BOR beat-em-up by the name of Spider-Man Maximum Carnage Returns, uh, featuring Deadpool. Made by Heat Games, this is a remake slash sequel to the original 1994 title published by our good friends down at LJN. Go get em, boys! So if you're familiar with that one, you'll be able to acclimatize really quickly to this, as it reuses a lot of the same sprites, backgrounds, and overall gameplay design design, but does see some key improvements in the moment-to-moment -moment combat. You now have a variety of special moves at your disposal, which can be done via traditional fireball-style motions or simple button taps in conjunction with your main attack. Some of these are just super fun, like Spidey pulling himself forward via his webs and smacking feet first into a row of baddies, or Venom reaching into the depths of his Capcom fighting game history with various toothy tendrils. Each character also has the standard crowd-clearing Mega Crush, with Venom doing his very best and most graceful pirouette. I'll try spinning, that's a good trick! And a dedicated mobility move, which is done via a single button press. Spidey auto swings to the left or right, and Eddie does a far reaching stomp attack, which can also pound enemies senseless. Hey, phrasing! What's cool is that none of these useful attacks drain your health in the traditional beat em up health draining style, but are instead governed by this meter here, which builds up fairly fast over over time. This really lets you go ham with a flurry of special attacks whenever you want, almost. But since you don't have to worry about your life bar, it frees you up to have fun with the combat. Best of all is that unlike the original Maximum Carnage, Heat Games decided to fix one of its most fundamental flaws by including two-player and even three-player co-op. I'll literally never understand why LJN didn't bother with this basic feature. Anyway, that about sums up everything in regards to the gameplay. So PINEAPPLE SURPRISE! No, oh, uh, hey, uh, Deadpool's here, I forgot. I sure hope you like his Marvel vs. Capcom 3 quotes, cause you're gonna hear the them quite a bit. And by quite a bit, I mean they never ever stop. Fortunately, he plays just as well as the other two. He can do a shoryuken, lob grenades, shoot guns, teleport, all of the Deadpool things. The problem is that he's so awkwardly inserted into the narrative here. I mean, he, he was barely a blip on the Marvel radar when Maximum Carnage kicked off in 1993, so I guess that Heat Games just really, really loves the guy. Honestly, the only factual step back is the lack of the hero summons, which are one of the better features from the original game. Now, the story is set up in such a way where those heroes don't seem like they're in play, and you do meet Black Cat in a cutscene, but still, there was no reason to get rid of them. In terms of presentation, it's a bit of a mixed bag of spiders. Ugh. Oh wait, did I already use that joke before? I I did? I don't care. Now, there are some upgrades in terms of the visuals, like these shadows that pretty accurately follow all the characters. But Maximum Carnage Returns does use artwork from a ton of different sources and eras that stick out like sore, bloody thumbs. A bit of McFarlane here, Ultimate Spider-Man there, and uh, this picture of Shriek for some reason. It's always this type of stuff that bugs me about the majority of fan games. Consistency. Find or make the type of art style you want to use and stick with it. D don't just throw a dart at a bunch of comic book art for each and every character. 
Sound is, however, pretty good across the board. Venom and Spidey have some newly added voice clips that don't repeat too often. There's some really solid guitar-heavy remixes of classic Maximum Carnage tunes, as well as some recycled music from Ultimate Spider-Man, for good measure. This then brings me to the story, because, wow, there, there's some things we're gonna need to discuss here. Every level or so, a conversation triggers between Spidey, Venom, and Mr. Pool, and yeah, it's clear that English is not Heat Games' first language. I can let a few spelling or grammatical errors slide, but oftentimes it's actually really hard to discern what's trying to be said here, and you can't skip or fast forward these sequences at all. Your mileage may vary between whether this is a bad or good thing, but this translation is so rough that I think it falls more on the WTF side of things. It cannot be! Carnage in the active again? He seems more crazy than before and it has killed people, seems what time is it? With another purpose. What the hell are you talking about? Despite that, I would give this one a fairly enthusiastic recommendation. If you have a local buddy and good memories of playing Maximum Carnage, don't play Maximum Carnage. Play this instead because of the co-op and improved gameplay. Obviously, an asterisk should be placed on those story cutscenes, but if you happen to be DTF with rough subs like these, then Maximum Carnage Returns just might be the total package. Four non-existent Liefeld feet out of five. Next up, we have the very impressive uh, Sp Spider-Man, a Spidey-focused fighting game whose most egregious flaw just might be its basic-as-hell title. What this basically attempts to do is be the lost Capcom-developed Spider-Man fighting game that we never got. You obviously have the webhead and Venom sprites from those 90s games, but with new color palettes and vastly overhauled movesets. In fact, Spidey has a whole new mechanic where he actually runs out of webbing, which then changes his moves, but you can spend some of your super bar to replenish said cartridges. You also have a ton of new specials which both look and feel great, including a lightning quick webbed punch, a dashing slide kick, and a shitload of different hyper combos. Of special note is a defense focused spider sense which automatically lets you dodge out of incoming attacks, and a hilarious photography based super called One for JJ. The same treatment goes for Venom and pretty much every member of the cast, which aside from Black Cat and maybe Morby, are all of the villainous persuasion. The sprites fit into the established Capcom aesthetic really well, and it was hard for me to tell where some of their parts or animations were from, which is always a good thing. Doc Ock can scale walls and summon an Octobot, Craven can lay down traps and turn into a Lion Man, and both goblins as well as old Buzzard Butt here can soar above the stage like the cowards they are. I think the only weak link among them is Tombstone, whose design and coloring does feel a bit out of step from the rest of the roster. When you then wrap all this up with a faithful recreation of how Capcom era superhero fighters felt, coupled with the stellar presentation, these versus screens look phenomenal, you wind up with very little to complain about, but I'm sure I can still find something. The audio is a legit issue. Music is not properly looped or timed to the bout, so at least once per match the music will fade out in the middle of battle, go silent for 10 seconds, and then start over again. <laughs> Course. Voice clips are also kind of jarring, as the author or authors went a bit, or no, on second thought, went way overboard, giving every character a ton of lines from very different sources with incredibly inconsistent audio quality. I am some of this speech even has snippets of music or other sound effects playing with them, which, I can't lie, hurts the presentation a little bit. There is one character who exhibits not only that, but other problems. Here we have Herman Schultz, aka Shaka! who not only has way too many quotes and not only has really annoying sound effects whenever he fires his gauntlets, he also has this fucking move. <laughs> 
let me know in the comments how to deal with this thing. It goes on forever and causes tons of chip damage. But really, aside from the sound, Spider-Man, the uh, fighting game, is a web-spinning, butt-slapping good time. I know there's other Spidey Mugens out there that might be worth taking a look at. Let me know in the comments section below. But this one especially caught my eye. Not really sure why they went with the title screen of the Fox Kids 16-bit Spider-Man game, but eh, I can't really be mad about that. 4.5 web cartridges out of 5. Our next game is something different, but at the same time, very familiar. Spider-Man Homecoming, a rather odd hack that attempts to adapt the story of the movie of the same name to varying results, or poor results, actually. That's not to say it's bad, it's just that this is an exact clone of Ninja 5.0, or Ninja Cop in Europe, which is an obscure little GBA gem that was developed by Hudson, published by Konami, and never saw a release in its country of origin. As to why it now has Spider-Man in it? Well, the original game featured a purple clad ninjaman, a ton of hostages, and a grappling hook. Ah uh, yeah, I can see you putting all the pieces together. Homecoming alters Mr. 5-0's sprite to the dumpy looking spider guy seen here, replaces his sword attack with a stubby kick, and adds web shooting in lieu of ninja magic. Aside from some fantastically low-res stills of the movie, whew, that's so GBA, it's literally the same ninja adventure. This is a bit disappointing because while you can certainly keep all the generic gun-totting gangsters as they fit within a spider game well enough, it's a shame that the bosses, which include giant samurais, frogs, and warlords, received absolutely no changes or even color edits. Like, uh, import some sprites from other GBA Spidey games. There's enough of them. Swap the big samurai into Rhino. I, I, you figure it out. This is a bit of a sticking point because the stages all feel appropriate for Peter to punch through as well. There's office buildings, factories, and an airport. So really, it's only those bosses which break the immersion of what you're playing. This is because the core gameplay of Ninja 5 does a really good job at making you feel like Spidey as you're crawling through vents and swinging onto platforms. There's also a neat power-up system that sees your lumpy spider boy getting stronger and stronger, thus changing his suit color, thus changing your web shots to do more damage and cover more area. You can also do a screen clearing attack that, while very ninja-like, is still pretty close to a maximum spider, so I'll let it pass. Now, all of this is more of a testament to how enjoyable Ninja 5.0 is, and not so much the work that was put into this hack per se, but I wanted to include this one because I feel it's a great example of a modder looking at a game that already played well and works as a template for web swinging action. So whether it's the GBA original or this, you're gonna have some old school fun with Spider Ninja Man Cop. 3.9 Fat Spider Dongs out of 5. Our last game I unfortunately wasn't able to play, but I really wanted to give it a shout out, cause it's pretty exciting. Unlike everything else we've covered today, this is a fully 3D open world Spider-Man game being worked on by a single self-taught game dev by the name of uh, Gib? Gibbo? Gibzero? <laughs> you kids and your crazy names. Right now, this Unreal Engine project consists of Spidey swinging around a gray, textureless Big Apple, but already has a lot of great features that have been slowly added over the last year or so. There's web wings which allow you to cut through the sky and maneuver at breakneck speeds. Webs attach and detach from buildings in a realistic way. You can surf and grind on manhole covers while anchoring yourself to make tight turns. Hell, there's even split-screen multiplayer. Gibby's plan right now is to eventually change the character model to avoid any possible C and Ds, and to offer a playable demo for people to mess around with and to get feedback, although there doesn't seem to be a hard date for that as of yet. For being a one-person show and being a fairly elaborate 3D affair, I think this is looking pretty sick, and if you're interested in supporting it, check out the project's Patreon, which is linked below. It would be really cool if this somehow eventually evolved into, yeah, I don't know, the superlative Arachno Man. Oh wait, he uh, he's a, he's an actual thing. Um, how about Arachna Man? What's that? Oh, c come on! Regardless, best of luck to Big Gibbo in the future. 
And that's about all the web swinging I can do today. I, I, I gotta work on my cardio more. But I am aware that there's a few more fan games and hacks floating around out there, so post up your suggestions in the comments below or hit me up on any of the socials that you see on your screen. So until then, excelsior true believers, and I'll see you next time on the Mediocre Spider-Mat.